Here's a short explanation of Carcassonne Gold Rush. Let's start with the basics. The game from Mindoc is for two to five players, ages eight and up. The average game time is about 35 minutes, with the objective of the game to be the player who has the highest score by building railroads, towns, and mining gold. Here's what's in the box. The scoreboard, 72 game tiles. One of these is the starting tile, indicated by a different backing. Five tents one for each player, and five sets of different colored cowboy meeples, five for each player. And there's 63 mining tokens. To set up, find the starting tile and place it in the center of the playing area. Shuffle the remaining tiles and place them face down around the playing area so that each player can reach them. Each player should collect their color meeples and their tent. Place one of the meeples on the starting mark of the scoreboard. Mix up the mining tiles and place them face down, that's pickaxe up, where they can be reached. Players determine who will go first, and play continues clockwise around the table. On a player's turn, they should draw one of the game tiles. They will then need to place that tile so that it is adjacent to one of the other tiles already in the play area. You must make sure that the tile lines up exactly to match. For example, railroads connecting to railroads, or mines connecting to mines. You cannot have a piece line up incorrectly, like a railroad going into a plane, or a mine adjacent to a railroad. Once the player has placed their tile, they then have different options on what they can do next. But before we go over those options, let's look at the different things that you are trying to build in this game. Cities. Cities have railroad tracks that come in and out of them. They are worth three points for every completed part. Mines. When a mine is placed, you will see a nugget or nuggets on the section. Once the mine is placed, place the corresponding number of mine tokens on the piece face down. A mine, when completed, is worth however many gold nuggets appear in the mine. Plus, the player who completes the mine will collect all of the mine tokens for scoring later in the game. Railroads. A railroad is worth one point for every section of the track. If a locomotive appears on that track, then the railroad is worth two points for each piece. The planes. The planes can have teepees or horses on them. They are worth two points for each teepee and four points for each set of horses. So once you place a tile, you can now choose to claim something on that tile with one of your meeples. If the feature you are trying to claim is connected to another piece that is already claimed, you will have to choose a different feature or take a different action. When you place your meeple on a feature, it remains there until the feature is completed. Once it's completed, you can then count the number of points the feature is worth and move your scoring token on the board. You must also remove the meeple from the play area and you can use it elsewhere in another turn. The only exception to this is when you claim an area of the plane on one of the teepees or horses. The meeple is placed lying down and remains there throughout the game until the last tile is played. Then at the end of the game, you see how far the plane extends and how many teepees and horses are in it. The planes extend until they reach a barrier such as a railroad track, a mine, or a town. If you place a tile and decide that there is nothing worth claiming on it, you may choose to place your tent on a mine. It can only be placed on a mine that is not complete and doesn't already have a tent on it. When you place a tent, it means you may choose any of the mine tokens from that mine. You save those with your other mine tokens until the end of the game for scoring extra points. Every turn that you do not place a meeple, your tent will claim another mine token from that mine. You can also relocate your tent at any time during a turn when you have not placed a meeple. When the last tile is played and that player completes their turn, it's time to do the final scoring. 
You will need to look at the board for any incomplete features, any planes that are claimed, and finally, count your additional points from your mining tokens. Any incomplete city will be worth three points per completed section of the rails coming into town. Any incomplete railroads will collect one point per section. You ignore any locomotives on incomplete railroads. Any incomplete mines. Remove the remaining mining tokens. No one gets these. Count the number of gold nuggets that are in the mine, and it's one point per nugget. In counting the planes, you must see where the borders are for each claim. Then count the number of TPs and horses that are within that land. Again, it's two points for each TP and four points for each set of horses. On a rare occasion, you may find multiple meeples claiming the same feature. This can happen when two players start building in different areas, but then those two features become connected. If this happens, the player who has the most meeples on the feature takes the points. If it is the same amount of meeples, they split the points. Finally, you count your mining tokens to see how many points they have. They have one point for each gold nugget. Rocks are worth zero. At the end of the counting, the person with the highest score is the winner. Check out our other videos, which include other versions of Carcassonne and many other great games. Let's play!